Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for hitting the like button. Today we have 5 great stories. The first story is called Can't Have a Pay Rise. My first proper job was around 1990 in London, which is famously one of the more expensive cities in the world. My salary was a thousand pounds per month, easy to remember. I don't know what the national or London average salary for a young graduate was back then, but I was definitely earning at the low end of the pay spectrum, especially because it was work that required quite some specialist skills and a lot of discretion. The pay was bad, but I enjoyed the work, and one of its big perks was that I had to go to Paris for about one week each month. While I was there, my hotel was paid for automatically and meals were reimbursed when I submitted receipts. Anyway, after several months, I felt that I had proven my Myself to be hardworking, competent, reliable, discreet, etc. So I asked for a raise, explaining that I was finding it hard living in London on the salary. They could not fault my work, but brushed me off with vague suggestions that maybe we could revisit the question of pay at some unspecified later date. At this time, the place I was living in didn't have a washing machine, which was fine with me, as I didn't want to spend a portion of my meager income on buying one. And there was a laundrette very close by and I enjoyed reading the newspapers each Sunday morning while my clothes went round and round in soapy circles. Once or twice though, I had to go to Paris late in the week when I didn't have a lot of clean clothes, so I'd take what clean items I had and get some socks and underwear cleaned by the hotel laundry service after I'd worn them. It soon dawned on me that my bosses never queried the extra expense of laundry. Maybe the hotel just billed them for the total amount of each of my visits without itemizing the details. I don't know and didn't ask. Q, the malicious compliance. Apparently, I couldn't have a pay increase, but I could get laundry done at a hotel in Paris. Okay. For the rest of the time I worked in that job, I used to save up all my dirty clothes, including shirts, trousers, etc., and take them with me from London to Paris to have them laundered there. I felt a bit bad about this, because hotels always charge exorbitant prices for the service. Cleaning my socks and underwear was maybe costing an extra £20 each trip I made, but I was saving myself £2 on the laundrette. There was never any fallout as such for the laundry issue. After a year, I told them that I had been offered a paid internship in the USA, and they said they would increase my salary if I stayed working for them in London. But I took great pleasure in telling them that their offer was too little, too late, and that I wasn't interested. The next story is called, I will not work here as long as she is here. This happened to a friend of mine around a decade ago. She was working the bar at a small bar slash bistro kind of place and her boss had recently hired a new employee that was a friend of his. First weeks she was kind of humble and didn't really make any impression besides being a bit slow and sloppy when it came to serving tables. My friend was the one who got to use the company car to pick up the morning newspapers but she could also use it for personal matters however she saw fit. That didn't really sit well with the new employee, because she felt entitled to the car and all the perks that came with it. One day, out of the blue, she started to boss my friend around, sending her to do odd jobs, help out in the kitchen, whatever. My friend knew that she was friends with the boss, and since she didn't want any drama, she complied with every request. So off to the kitchen she went, leaving the front of the house entirely to Mrs. I'm friends with the boss. The place quickly filled up with people during lunchtime, and as you would expect, she couldn't handle the job or the pressure even a little bit. She was in the weeds right from the start. The place was a mess, floors covered in trash, tables not being served, the bar was full of dirty dishes, and so on. Because of all that, she wasn't answering the phone in the bar when the boss was calling, so he came to check what's happening, and as you would expect, he was furious. He was yelling at my friend asking her why she was in the kitchen and not working the front of the house and how everything was a complete disaster. She told him honestly that if his friend wants to be in charge and boss her around, she will comply because she will automatically lose every argument because on their personal relationship. She finished off with, I will quit today, I don't need this. She didn't leave immediately after that and stayed for a coffee. The boss had calmed down at that point and said that even if she quit, the coffee was on the house and whatnot and stayed to chat with her. They were actually having quite a few laughs and a good time. Mrs. Entitled saw all that and thought that the boss sided with my friend in that situation because they were still chummy. She walked up to the boss and said that she will not keep working for him as long as my friend is still there, not knowing that my friend quit 10 minutes ago. She added some profanities to spice things up. The boss just gave her the coldest look possible and pointed her to the door. 
My friend kept working there for another few good years. The third story is called Malicious Compliance Used for Good. This happened many years ago, when I worked at a regional supply warehouse for a company that specialized in a certain kind of widget. I worked in the office, taking calls from customers and working with the warehouse staff to get orders picked and shipped. Office staff communicated with the warehouse over the PA system. Only those of us in the office and supervisors had access to the PA system. Protocol was that we would state the person's name we were communicating with first and then state whatever we had to say. We were to repeat it at least once. Being easily bored, I never repeated things exactly the same while injecting subtle humor where I could. All of it professional and above reproach of course. There was a quality control department of two people who monitored the warehouse staff and helped when things went awry. These people knew the warehouse from end to end and were often called to find witches that went missing. There was some friction between the office staff and quality control because of petty reasons that I realized were stupid after being on the job for a couple of weeks. That friction sometimes bled over into the warehouse staff. On this day, the warehouse staff could not find a very particular widget for an important customer, so they called in Dory from Quality Control to find it, while they moved on to other orders. Dory searched the warehouse from end to end, but could not find it either. She was out of breath when she came scurrying up to my cubicle for help. She said, Could you tell Mark that I have no clue where it is? I asked, You want me to tell Mark you have no clue? She replied, Yes, please, with some urgency. I nodded, thanked the goddess for this opportunity, picked up the phone and pushed the PA button. Dowie anxiously watched my every move because this widget was important. Slowly and clearly, I said, Mark, Dowie has no clue where the widget is located. Mark, Dowie is clueless. The entire place erupted in laughter. All the managers came out of their offices laughing and the warehouse and loading dogs came to a standstill. This lasted for a good 5 minutes at least. The act of this huge group belly laugh was like a valve for all the pressure that had been building up over trying to keep up during our busy season. It totally changed the mood of the entire place for the better for a while. Fortunately, Dory was good natured and did not take offense. She laughed too, because I had done exactly as she asked. Consequently, relations between office staff and quality control began to draw along with our relationship with the warehouse staff. When I occasionally ventured into the warehouse, people were much nicer and more cooperative. It became a nicer place to work, and all because of malicious compliance. And yes, they did find the widget. The next story is called Check Compliance. Several years back, I was in the process of changing jobs, moving to a new city and buying a new house. To purchase the house, I needed a $66,000 down payment at closing. I had the cash, but it was in a few different accounts and I didn't have a local bank that could issue a cashier's check. To resolve this issue, I went to the local credit union and explained what was going on. I discussed opening an account with them, transferring the money from my other accounts to the new account and then getting a cashier's check issued from that account for closing. They agreed that this was something they could do and the timeline was easily supported. I opened an account that day, transferred the money that night and then show up a few days later to get my cashier's check. When I get to the counter and ask for the check, I am informed that I must wait 7 days after the funds transfer before they can issue a cashier check from those funds. We go back and forth several times, where I explain to her that I am closing on my house in an hour and the 7 day wait was not disclosed when I opened the account. She apologized but was unflinching in regards to the policy and said it was in writing and I signed it when I opened the account. After a long pause, I asked her for $66,000 in cash. She looked at me, waited for a few seconds to see if I was joking, followed with, excuse me for a moment, I'll be right back. The supervisor came out and simply asked, sir, who would you like us to make the check to? To this day, I wonder if I would have been able to close with a vat of cash instead of a check. The last story is called, are you serious? This one happened a few years ago, when I worked in corporate for a large subchain that has currently seen better days. They had purchased a taco concept and part of my job consisted of going around the country to help open up these new restaurants. Now the subchain is not known for corporate luxuries, so I didn't bat an eye at the daily food expense allowance when traveling, which was $42 per day, broken out by meal. Breakfast, $8. Lunch, $14. Dinner, $20. So you couldn't even scrimp on breakfast and lunch to get yourself an alright meal. But okay, I usually stayed in hotels that had a complimentary breakfast buffet and I often skipped lunch and worked straight through the day so my expenses were regularly 
less than 20 dollars per day. Now the problem comes when during one of these trips my dinner came out to 20 dollars and 5 cents. Before a cash tip mind you that I paid out of my own pocket and didn't expense. I didn't think much of it because hey it's a nickel and I didn't go over my daily spending allotment. Cut to the end of the month after submitting my expense report and I get a call from accounting that went like this. I'm looking at your July expenses. How did you want to handle this? Um, I did handle it. I submitted. No, you went over on one of your dinners. Would you like to send payment in or have it taken from your payroll? I'm sorry, what total are we talking about? You spent $20.05 on dinner XYZ, which is a 5 cent overage. Silence. Then I asked, okay, so I owe 5 cents? Yes, you can take that out of my payroll, but please do it over the next 5 pay periods. I'd like to split up the payments for budgeting purposes. Are you serious? Are you? Following her true nature, she took a penny out of the next 5 checks and I made a point of spending as close to $42 a day as humanly possible for every other trip I ever took with that company. And now it's your time to shine. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories? I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.